Good evening, everyone. Hello, Dr. Lez. How's it? How are you? Hello, Rob. How are you? Baruch Hashem, Yom Yom. It's so nice to see you. I missed you on Thursday night. You wasn't with us. You know, the problem is that I've got a Zoom with the Sangram Gardens and I've got Rav Kutzak here. It's, it's a bit hard. But, uh -huh. uh, but Rav, I'll just quickly tell you, not that yours, but at least I'll hear your recording. Just very quick, amazing. The Durban International Film Festival that boycotted Israel. They've yes. actually boycotted Israel and we're proud to boycott Israel. So, um, Jordi Sank's entry about Ella Blumenthal, who just turned 100 on Prashad Nachamu, he did a documentary and that won the best, co won the best South African documentary. So, sure. Ella Blumenthal, who's very, very, very Tsioni. And Jordi okay. Sank is also very Tsioni. Mm -hmm. uh, his entry won the best South African documentary. Unbelievable. And Ella, mm -hmm. after the war, after the after mm -hmm. being in three camps in the war to so came to Israel, where well, was British Palestine at that time. So you yeah. know, it just shows they try to boycott us, but we win. Look at that, hey? It's all Minashamayan. <laughs> <laughs> You see, we teach a lesson. We see the Baruch No, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. I'm just admitting few more people for the show, just giving chance. And then I'm going to um, put the, what do you call it? The show on, I'm going to put everything on mute. And then we we'll start the show. Bezrat Hashem. on mute. Mute. Everyone muted, yeah. Okay, so Rabotai, the subject of the show today is Aftara. And what are we gonna learn today, Be'ezrat Hashem, together we'll try to understand what is Aftara? What is Aftara, number one? Why do we read Aftara? What is the reason to read Aftara? Also, why is it called Aftara? We'll try to explain why do, why is it called Aftara? Why we read Aftara? Um, why after <clears throat> we're reading the Torah, we do the Aftara? Um, how do we do the Aftara today? We'll explain, does it have to be from a scroll or not? And then we'll go through some of the halachot regarding Haftara Be'ezrat Hashem. So Be'ezrat Hashem, Na'asev V'Natzliach, V'Hashem Alenu Berachamav Yarviach. השיעור יהיה לעילוי נשמת אסתר קדן בת קציה מורדכי בן רחמה הרב אברהם חיים בן אליעזר יעקב תמר בת זהבה רחל בת מלכה סולטנה יעקב סלומון בן פרחה דבורה רות בת בילה חיים אליהו בן ישעיהו דניאלה בילה בת יעקב ראובן uh, also, Tsipora Bat Israel, Be'ezrat Hashem, that the Shaul will be Le'ilui Nishmatam, that means that it will uplift the <coughs> Neshama. We're going to delegate the Shaul for those of the Jewish people that are sick and injured, Lirfuat, Liora Bat Miriam, Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Orna Bluma Bat Miriam, הרב אברהם בן מרינה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, הרב משה בן דבורה, מרדכי דוד בן לאה, משה בן יהודית, יוסף בן אסתר, חנה שרה בת דבורה, דבורה בת אסתר, שלמה פנחס בן שינה פישה, וחונה טוביה בן חיים שאול זליג ושושנה בת דבורה. Please God, רפואה שלמה to all of them ולכל שאר חולי ופצועי עמו ישראל בכל מקום שהם. So the subject of the Shaul is Haftara. What do we know about Haftara? We'll try and see today. Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll learn together. We'll try to understand what is Haftara. So as you all know, on Shabbat, Yom Tov, also on a fast day, Hazal constitute for us to read on those days after we read the Torah, immediately after that, to read the Haftara. And today, Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll try to go to understand where is the source of reading the Haftarah, okay? Why are we reading Haftarah? Why is it so important? So first of all, let's explain what is Haftarah. 
Haftarah, Hazal explained to us, Hazal explained that the reading of the Haftarah, it's certain amount of verses from the prophet or from the king, that mean the Nach, Nevi'im, Ketuvim. And Hazal constitute for, for us to read it every Shabbos after we read the Torah and after Yom Tov, after we read the Torah or after the fast day in uh, certain congregation, even the small fast, that means the Sfaradim doesn't read the Haftarah, for example, <clears throat> after small fast. When I say small fast, I'm talking about the 12 hours fast. But the Ashkenaz, they read the Haftarah also after the read, <clears throat> the reading of the Torah on a fast day. Okay, so where is the source? What is Haftarah? Sorry. <clears throat> so, Rabbi David Abu Dharam. Rabbi David Abu Dharam, I'm sure that you read a lot about him and you hear about a lot about him because the Rambam bring him a lot. Uh, sorry, not the Rambam bring him. He bring the Rambam a lot because he came after the Rambam. Rabbi David Abu Dharam born in a city of Sevilla in Spain. He born around 681 years ago. And he wrote commentary on all the tefillah. And in his commentary on the tefillah, of Shabbat morning, he explained that something very interesting, and listen to that, that the Naftarat reading should be minimum of 21 verses, and we explain why. That means when you read from the prophet or from the king, the Haftara, he says should be minimum of 21. Why Dafka 21? I'll get to it just now. Hazal constitute for us to read, okay, the Haftara, especially regarding the event that's happening on a Shabbos. What is it to me? Today when I was walking from shul, I've been asked a question that that person been asked by his daughter. And the question was like this, why do, how do we define which haftarah should we read? For example, if we read parashat, if we read parashat, um, Sorry, there is someone on my line and it be annoying. Let me just mute and it's disturbing me. Okay, now it's better. So Hazal constitute for us that if we read, for example, Parashat Bereshit or Parashat Noah or Parashat Shmot, whatever the Parsha is, they constitute for us according to that event that we read on Parashat Shavua they source and they decide which event been mentioned on a prophet or on a king that fit with the parsha, and that's what we read. So, for example, on Parashat Bereshit, Hazal constitute the parsha for that, for that parsha especially. Or as we know, in uh, Parashat Vait Hanan, Hazal constitute for us Nahamu Nahamu Ami. That's going to be the Aftarah. Why? Because it's speaking about, and it's talking about the time, number one of the destruction, because we know the destruction happened, and it was after Tisha B'Av, so it's come to comfort us, Nahamu Nahamu Ami, we should comfort. How does it fit with the Pasha? Because usually the story of Tisha B'Av, or the date of Tisha B'Av, to be exactly full, straight, Parashat Beit Hanan fall after Tisha B'Av. And that's how Hazal constitute for us the uh, Haftarah according to the event that's happening in that Parsha or according to what's happening in that week. So now we understand how Hazal defined which Haftarah to choose from the prophet or from the king. Why do we read Haftarah? Why is it so important that we read after? Is it not enough? <clears throat> is it not enough to read to read the Parshat Shavuot? Mm -hmm. So why do we read? So the reading of the Aftar being constituted for the Jewish people, okay, during the time of the king, the Greek king Antiochus, the wicked Antiochus. Antiochus, that was a Greek king, okay. During his 
leadership, when he was in a room, when he ruled also over Eretz Israel, he made a decree that the Jewish people were not allowed to read from Torah Shebechtav. What it means Torah Shebechtav? That means the five books of Moses. That they're not allowed to read it. And if anyone will be found reading the Torah Shebechtav, okay, the punishment is dead. So Hazal realized that it's a very dangerous situation to read in a Torah in public when there is congregation. So the decision was that instead of the reading from the third book of Moses, Hazal constitute for the Jewish people to read from the prophet or from the king. And that's how become the reading, the reading of the Haftarah. That's according to Rabbi David Abu Dharam. That's how we explain. What's happened after that? After that decree being canceled, that means after the king Antiochus, the wicked Antiochus died, all of his decree used to be canceled. Hazal constitute back that the Jewish people should return back and start reading, start reading again from the Torah. So, Therefore, Hazal constitute after the reading of the Torah, special brocha, special brocha for the Haftarah. So we see from here that the main idea behind that, behind all of the, the reading of the Haftarah came from where? From the decree that was by Antiochus not to read from the Holy Torah in public, that the Jewish people not allowed. There is other opinion that brought in a Gemara, that Hazal say, that Hazal say that, Hazal say that it came during the time of Ezra Sofer. That means that Ezra Sofer, he constituted for the Jewish people to read the Haftarah. So vice versa, we see, where is it? We'll see, we're learning that it was two different opinion where it was, okay. The main reason that Hazal constitute, now we're gonna to reach to number 21. I don't know if you remember at the beginning, I explained that we explained that the main idea, the main idea was that we should read at least 21 verses. Why Dafka 21 verses that we have to read from the prophet in Haftarah? That means the Haftarah have to have minimum of 21 verses. So I saw a beautiful commentary that brought by Hazal, our sages brought us in a Gemara in Masechet Megillah in page 23, folio one. And Lehalacha, it's been passed in a Mishnah Brura, if you want to check it up, in Siman Resh Pei Dalet, that means 284, verse one, Saif Aleph. There it said that the main reason for us that we have to have 21 verses on Haftarah minimum that it's because that during the time of the decree by Antiochus that he stopped the Jewish people from reading from the five book of Moses, what happened? They decide that they'll have a seven olim during the, the reading of the Haftarah from the prophet or from the king. And we know that if we read from the Torah that every aliyah, for example, Kohen, Levi, Israel, and etc. After that, each aliyah have to have at least a minimum of three verses. Less than that, it can't be aliyah. That means if the Kohen go up, we should read at least three verses, and only after that we can call a Levi. And when the Levi go up, he have to read three verses. And only after that, that he read three verses, we can call Israel. That means that every aliyah minimum have to have three. So Hazal constitute the same thing that when it's come to the Aliyot on the time of the Haftarah, when it was the decree by Antiochus Arasha, the wicked Antiochus, that they should read minimum of 21 verses and only then they can finish the Haftarah. So from here we learn why it was the constitution that Hazal bring in that will be at minimum of 21. That's how it's the, the Hazal telling us in the Gemara 
remember in Masechet Megila in Kaf Gimel Amud Aleph, that's mean 23 folio 1, and Mishnah Brura Resh Pei Dalet, that's mean 284 verse 1. That's why we read 21 verses minimum in Aftara. Now, why do we read the Aftara? Why is it so important to read? Why do we call it Aftara? Sorry, we explain why is it call it, why is it why we read the Aftara now? We have to understand why they given that reading after the Torah, Haftara. Why Dafka Haftara? So Rabbi David Abu Dharam, I'm going to bring two different opinions. The one is Rabbi David Abu Dharam, and one I'm going to bring the Rabbi Nutam. <clears throat> so Rabbi, no, Rabbi David Abu Dharam explained that the main reason that we call it Aftar, that it, during the time of the Gezerah, the Gezerah, it means the decree, that how do a person used to be fulfill the obligation, niftarim mehovat kriyat Torah b'shabbat, how do you, they used to fulfill that reading of the Torah on Shabbos, on Yom Tov, or during the fast, by that that they used to read from the prophet or from the king. Therefore, therefore, it's called haftara, milshon niftar, what it means niftar, fulfill the obligation, fulfilling the obligation of reading the Torah so instead of reading the Torah, how do we used to do instead? We used to read from the prophet or from the kings. Rabbeinu Tam, Rabbeinu Tam, who was Rabbeinu Tam? Rabbeinu Tam was the grandson of Rashi HaKadosh. Rabbeinu Tam say something very interesting and listen to that. He say, call, <coughs> sorry. Sorry, my throat got dry. Rabbeinu Tam say, he was the grandson of Rashi HaKadosh, we explain, and he said like this, whatever my grandfather managed to do and wrote commentary, I can do everything that my grandfather done, except one thing, to write commentary on all the Torah. And we know, I don't know how many of you are well known, but there is two different tefillin. We done a show about tefillin. Maybe I should repeat it again one day. There is few different tefillin. There is one, that the most common one that everyone put is Rashi HaKadosh, Tfilin Shel Rashi. Then there is Tfilin Shel Rabbeinu Tam. The Chabad and the Sfaradim, the Sfaradi after he get married should put it, the, the, the Hasidut Chabad, the movement of Chabad, they put already after, from the day that they obligated to put Tfilin, they put also Rabbeinu Tam. So we see from here, and the Maran Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo wrote in a, in a Shulchan Aruch, that Rak Anashim Hasidim and Anshe Maase, a person that they're pious, and Anshe Maase, that they're really all day studying Torah, and that they should put Tfilin of Rabbeinu Tam. Ado kam the Gaon Hida, Rabbi Chaim Yosef David Azulai, he born in Jerusalem 297 years ago, and he said, Today in our time, that when he was alive, he said that everyone that got married after he got married, he's speaking to the Sfaradim because he was asking for the Sfaradim. Today they should also put an Arab of Adi Yosef, also follow that. So from here we see why the Sfaradim put. The third kind of the feeling that there is is Shemusha Rabba. Shemusha Rabba, usually the mystical rabbi put it on Minha during time, Minha, and they dive in with that Minha. That's called Shimusha Rabbah. You don't see it here in, uh, in this country. It is, I don't think that I saw anyone that putting Shimusha Rabbah in this country. Shimusha Rabbah, you saw it mainly in Israel. I needed to go one year to um, Eretz Israel. I needed to meet with Rabbi Steinbuch for to organize a few things for Alachakli. Uh, when I'm talking about close to 18 years ago, almost 15, 18 years ago. So Rabbi Sternbuch put Shimusha Rabbah. Okay, so Rabbi Nutam explained why is it called Aftara? All what I've done that just introduction to understand who was Rabbi Nutam. So Rabbi Nutam bring a different idea. Why is it called Aftara? And Rabbi Nutam say, according to what Hazal tell us in the Gemara and Masechet Sota. Hazal in the Gemara and Masechet Sota in page 39, folio one. Listen what they say. 
יישא ברגע שנפתח ספר התורה. And a moment that we open the holy Torah and we start reading. אסור לדבר. No one allowed to talk. Not only, not חס ושלום talking דברי חולים. חולים is anything. Even דברי הלכה. Even הלכה, הלכה, we're not allowed to talk. That means from here we learn הלכה that during the reading of the Torah, a person should keep quiet and listen to the reading and follow the reading. He said, but after we finish to read the Torah, after we finish to read the Torah, we allow to talk. So therefore, the word haftara come to tell us milshon p'tiha. What it means p'tiha? Like you opening now the door that we can start talking after the reading of the Torah. What it means talking? Not has v'shalom that you allow to talk in shul. People can come and miss interpreted what I'm saying. Has v'shalom? No, I didn't say that. That you can talk. Like, for example, a person need the siddur, pass me the siddur. Where, where are we reading in Aftara? You can show him everything that, everything that belong, everything that belong to speak about regarding the davening, regarding the reading, then you can talk. But has v'shalom to take divrei chuli. Okay. Why do we, <clears throat> now we're going to get to another idea to explain. Why do we read Aftara straight after the Torah? Why not before? So when Hazal constitute for us to read the Torah, it, it was many, many years back. And the reason for us, that will never be, that to never happen, that a person not going to read the Torah at least for three days. So that's why they decide, Hazal, sorry, that we should read the Torah on a Monday, on a Thursday, and on Shabbos. Obviously on a festival, obviously on a fast day. So not going to be three days, full three days without reading the Torah. During the decree, we explained that Antiochus forbidden the Jewish people from reading from the five book of Moses, Torah Shebechtav, what did he decide? He allowed them to read the Aftara. So Hazal come and say, the only reason that we read Aftara, it was during the time of Antiochus, because we didn't have an option. So instead of reading the Torah, we read the Nevi'im, that that's the prophet, we read the Malachim, that that's the king, that that's who's, what we have to read. But now, after the decree is finished and we don't have it, has v'shalom to show that you're going to read the Aftara. Because why? Because if you read the Aftara, it will look like the book of the prophet or the book of the kings, the, the Sifra Melachim, that look more important, has v'shalom, from the five books of Moses, from the Torah Shebechta. Therefore, Hazal constitute that that we already allowed to read the Aftara. And that came only after the decree of Antiochus. We're not going to cancel it. But you're going to read it straight after you read the Torah. After you close the Torah, you obviously have to say Hatsi Kaddish. And then the person that's going to read the Aftara, that's called the Maftir, he'll go again up. He's going to read three or four verses there. And then, and only then, we, he said the brachot of the Torah, and then he start again with a different brachot that's regarding to the Aftara. Why? Not to has v'shalom show that the word of the prophet or the word of the king more important from the word of the Almighty and the Holy Torah. And that's why we read the Aftara after, Rabotai, after reading of the Torah. Now, we're going to move on to try to answer another question. There is a mahloket amongst the posk. Should we read the book of the Aftara from a scroll or from a normal book of, um, what do you call it, the book of Aftarot? So lehalacha, you all know all of it. You know that we're reading from the book of the Aftarot. According to the Libush, Libush, it's Rabbi Mordechai Yafe, Baal Libushim. Why they call it like this, I will explain a beautiful story about him. It's an amazing story regarding Baal Alibush. 
because Baal Alibush, I have to explain that it's a very, very interesting story about him. But first, let's give him his opinion. Rabbi Mordechai Yafe, born in a city of Prague in a Czech Republic. He born around 491 years ago. And he said that we should read from the scroll. The same like we read the Torah from the scroll, the Aftarah also should be from the scroll. That's Rabbi Mordechai Yafe. What is the story about Rabbi Mordechai Yafe that they call it Baal Alibushim or Baal Alibush? Libushim is clothes, okay? Why do they call him the Mr. Clothes? I will explain. Rabbi Mordechai Yafe, that for his, for his living, he used to be a salesman. He used to sell all different kinds of tzatzkes. When I mean tzatzkes, he used to sell needles, he used to sell pen, all different things that the woman needed. And Rabbi Mordechai Yafe, beside that he was a salesman, he was a nice looking man. A matter of fact, a very beautiful looking man. And one day when he was going from house to house to sell, a Gentile woman asked him to come in to show her goods. And when he entered inside, she locked the door, he didn't understand. And uh, she didn't even ask him to show him the goods. She demanded that they will have a forbidden relationship. Rabbi Mordechai Yafe didn't know what to do with himself. But Agadosh Baruch Hu gave him a bit of a wisdom and he asked her, please, you know, no problem. But before we do what we have to do, can I go and clean myself? Can I, I was walking, I'm sweaty, I'm not feeling comfortable. She said, I'm no problem. In the olden days, they used to have what they call a public showers, public toilet, you know. And he didn't know what to do. While he was walking, he said to Akadosh Baruch Hu, if you take me out of here, he took on himself a decree that he will write books. And how many clothes he's wearing, that's what he's gonna write books. So, when he got to where he got, he saw that the sewage is open. And no, 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 for no one of Israel. He jumped into the sewage and he walked through the tunnels until he managed to escape. That's the story with Baal Alibush. And when he came out of it, he count what are you wearing? You're wearing the coat, you're wearing the jersey, you're wearing the shirt, the vest, and etc. And he worked it out that he have 10 different kind of clothes on him. And he wrote 10 books. And that's why he called Baal Alibush. And he decided that we have to read from scroll. Lehalacha, because most of the Ahronim, Paskin, that we can read from a printing book that's not on the scroll. And it doesn't have to be from scroll. And by the way, that's how the Magen Avraham Paskin that's how the Mishnah Brura Pasken in Resh Pei Dalet Saif Aleph, that means 200 in uh, 84 uh, verse 1. The old Pasken that we can read from a printing book, okay, that's called Sefer Aftarot. Not only that, the Magen Avraham, and I think, yes, also the Mishnah Brura print, that we can read also in every Humash, and every Humash that we read. <coughs> that we read every Shabbos, after the Parsha, there is the Aftarah. So if the Maftir go up, the person that reads the Aftarah, he can read also from the Chumash. Doesn't have to be a special scroll. So from here we see La'alacha bin Pasken, that uh, the Maftir, the person that uh, do the Aftarah, can read from a printing book that doesn't have to be from scroll. Now I'm gonna speak about regarding some halachot regarding to the Aftarah. And uh, maybe before that, I'll give time for question and then we'll do the halachot regarding to the Aftarah. Um, if anyone have any question, um, unmute yourself and ask question. In the meantime, I just have some tea. <clears throat> any question? No. Okay, let's continue. So, 
the reading of the Haftarah in most of the Ashkenazi community, they connected, they connected to the event of the Bar Mitzvah boy. That means that the Bar Mitzvah boy, part of his ceremony as a Bar Mitzvah ceremony is to read the Haftarah. You should read the Haftarah and that's part of it. Also, and most of the Yemenite, most of the Yemenite congregation, it's also a custom that the Bar Mitzvah boy, part of his ceremony, the Bar Mitzvah ceremony, that he should read the Haftarah. The Sephardi congregation, most of them, when I say most of them, and I'll explain now, doesn't think like this. It's not part of the ceremony, except two, except two different people, but that's the Moroccan people and the Iraqim, okay, from Iraq, that they have this custom that the Bar Mitzvah boy also should read the Haftarah and that's part of his ceremony. Okay. It's a minag that when a person go up to read the Haftarah, he read the Haftarah and all the congregation listen, okay? And following him, following the reading of the Haftarah from the book and read it, following reading it with him quietly, silently. Okay, now listen to that. That's a great Hiddush that I saw today. And some of the Hasidim congregation, the Hasidut, there is a custom that all the congregation, all the congregation sit and read together the Haftarah loudly. Can you believe it? All the congregation sitting together and they're reading the Haftarah together, but they're reading it loudly. Okay. The Mishnah Bura tell us in Siman Resh Pei Dalet, Saif Dalet. What does it mean? 284 verse 4. Katan yechol likroi taftara. That means a person that didn't reach the age of 13 can read the aftara. He can go and read the aftara. Although that he didn't reach bar mitzvah, he can read the aftara. That's in a condition that he can read, that obviously he knew the tropes. That he have to know the tropes, he have to know how to read properly, not just to mumble. And the tropes, is something very important between every, um, what do you call it, between the Sfaradim and the Ashkenazim and the Yemenite. It's very important that each one will stick to his own tropes. And, uh, and I saw that if I'm not mistaken, Rabbi David Abu Dharam bring that the tropes is something that go many years back. Okay, so we're talking about that the story of the tropes to read the Haftarah with the right tropes for the Ashkenazim, they have the own tropes for the Sfaradim, they have the own tropes. Obviously, the Yemenite have the own trope. It's very important that each one, that each one will stick to his own tropes. Okay? What's happened is a Shala and the Poskim, and that's brought in the Mishnah Bura. If they took, if they call up for a person to read the Haftarah, Okay, and that person cannot read the Haftar, but they call him up. Now you can't tell him to come down because people will say, you know, maybe it's Pasul. What it means, Pasul? There is a defect on him. So what do we do? Listen to that, what we do. So Hazal Paskin, and that's brought to Allah in the Mishnah Bura in Resh Pei Dalet, Sa'if Dalet, that what you do in a case like this, that you call someone else to read the Haftarah, but him, the person that they call him originally, because he can't read the Haftarah, he will say the brachot and the other person will read it with the tropes and he can say the bracha. The Mishnah Bura says, you should not do that. But I saw in, uh, in uh, the Ba'er Eitev, Ba'er Eitev, no, not by Retev, Halacha, Halacha Buratin there. It say that even a person that can't read it, and if you have a yacht side and he read to read the Aftara, what do we do? We call that person to go up. He'll say the brachot, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. And the person that can read it with a trop, he can read it for him. And then he'll say the brachot at the beginning and then the end. Okay. 
Now, very important thing that I'm sure that all of you know, that the reading of the Aftarah have to be done after Gelila. What it mean Gelila? After we close the Sefer Torah. After we close the Sefer Torah, there is a main reason why do we read after we scroll. That means we close the Sefer Torah, we do Gelila, and then we read, and then we start reading the Aftarah. Because I see in many congregations, they call the Maftir, and after the Hagbah, while they're closing the Sefer Torah, while they're doing the Gelila, the Maftir starts. That's wrong. And the main reason for it, Hazal bring and the Mishnah Brura bring it le'alacha. Again, in Siman 284, but now verse 7. And he explained like this. Sorry, verse 6. Verse 6. That it means that you have to do it after you close the Sefer Torah. That means after you finish the Gelila, after you put all the parochet, you put everything. Okay, why? That even that person, that person that done the Gelila, that closed the Sefer Torah, will have a chance to go and take a book and to follow the Haftarah. So from here we learn a very important halacha, that the reading of the Haftarah have to be done only after we finish to close the Sefer Torah. That means after we finish the Gilila, we dress the Sefer Torah, we put the parochet, we put the kava, then we put all the yad, we put the plate, the, 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 the Torah plate that there is on it. Only then, after it's closed, and the golel, the person that closed the Sefer Torah, gone and take a book and is ready, only then we can start the person that read the Matthew can say it. So the main reason that it's after Gelila to give a chance to the Golel, the person that closed the Sefer Torah, also to follow the Haftarah. Not many people keep to it. Remember verse six. Okay, now I'm gonna continue with a different halacha. There's a shala among the poskim on Shabbat that we read two parshiot. In Shabbat that we read two parshiot, for example, uh, for example, Ahremot and Kedoshim, that they usually two parshiot together, that they a joint parshiot. There's a shala, which one of the Aftara we should read, the Aftara of Ahremot or the Aftara that belong to Kedoshim, Parashat Kedoshim. So the Maran, the, in the Shulchan Aruch, the Maran Paskin, and brought it in the Mishnah in Resh Pei Dalet, again, 284 verse seven, that it's the custom is to read always after the second parsha. What is the last parsha? That's the Aftara that you read. For example, I'm especially bringing the Haremot and Kedushim because they usually continue one by one, sorry. They join together. So which Aftara we read? We read the Aftara, of the second reading, that's mean of Parashat, Parashat Kedoshim. Why? Because what happened usually that when you read the Aftara, it speak, Hazal constitute for us, we explain at the beginning, that the reading of the Aftara that belonged to the Parsha, that reading of the Parsha have to have very important that it's speaking about the event that's happening on a week. So Hazal say, in that case, what is the closer to that event is the last parsha, And that's what we're reading. So remember, if there is a joint parsha, we always read the last parsha. That's the aftara that belongs to it. OK. A person that go up to the parsha obviously have to read the brachot before the aftara and after the aftara. The question become, now, if there is no minyan, should we read the aftara or not? We obligate to read the minyan, the aftara, but without brocha. That means that's also applicable to our days today. Today, sometime, the shul is closed and you can't be in the minyan. So at home, you read, obviously, the parashat shavua. After that, you read the Haftarah, obviously, without 
listen to that without a brocha. What's happened now? There's another shala in man the poskim. That's the Rama, by the way, bringing it in Aga. Aga is adding up in Resh Pei Dalet, Saif Aleph, that means uh, 284, verse 1 in Aga. The Rama is Rabbi Moshe Isarmish. But he passed the, the, for all the Ashkenaz. And there is a Shalom and the Poskim. What's happened if when they start to read the Aftara was 10 people? That means it was a minion. So obviously the Maftir said the Brachot. And during his reading, some people left and there is now less than 10. Can he say the Brachot? He said, because he started, the beginning was with the minion. He must finish. He can finish with the Borcha. But listen to that. What happened if when he wanted to start the Aftara was no minion in a shul? Obviously, he can't say Borcha. But while he was reading the Aftara, suddenly more people come and they have a minion. Can he say, can he say Borcha in the end? No, he's not allowed. From here, we see a little bit of halachot regarding the haftarah. Now we understand why we read haftarah every Shabbos, every Yom Tov, every fast that, when I say every fast, that's mean for the Sephardim is the big fast lack. For example, that we read on Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av, the haftarah during the normal small fast, the Sephardim doesn't have haftarah. We don't read Aftara. But now we understand why we read Aftarot on those days. Where is it constitute? What causes us to read the Aftara? Why they call it Aftara? So as Rat Hashem, next time that this coming Shabbos, when we reading the Aftara, we'll take and we'll understand how important it is to read the word of the prophet after we reading the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu from the Holy Torah. So Be'ezrat Hashem that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will merit us and will merit all the Jewish people all over the world to see the Mashiach coming speedily in our day and building the Bet HaMikdash. Amen. Now if you have any other question Be'ezrat Hashem, I'll try to answer with the help of Hashem. Hello Marky, I can Hello, hear you. Bob, I have a question. <laughs> I'll try. No, it's a very simple question. You say if we, if we are davening on our own, you, there's no brocha for the haftarah. Nahum. Okay? What okay. about for the actual parasha? Did you say the brocha before and after? Very good, very good. No. Kal vahomer en bracha. Lama. En bracha. En bracha. Lom brim bracha. You don't say brocha for the reading of the Torah. Ah. Wow. There is no minion. The, the, the idea of the brocha being constituted when you have a minion, so people will answer amen. And baruchu baruch shemo. You follow? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's perfectly okay. clear. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Pleasure. Pleasure. Any other question, Rabota? Any other question regarding the Aftara? And thanks for the show. It was very interesting. Thank you, Shukua. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear me? Can Thank yes, you. how are you? Alright, how are you? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, where Anthony. The, where do we know that where do we know that the Bomits the, the Bomits for boy, where does it come originate that he always said the Haftorah? Where does it where did it come from that the Bomits for boy always said a Haftorah? From how long ago? Sorry. Adam, I missed you. What did you say? Where is where do we where do we know that the bar mitzvah boy always says the haftorah? For how far back does it go that, that the that the, the law that the bar mitzvah boy says a haftorah when he gets his bar mitzvah? First of all, it's not a law. I say it's a minhag. It's a, it's a custom. It's a custom that it's a custom. It's a minhag that part of the bar mitzvah ceremony. Okay that the bar mitzvah boy should read the haftarah. It's a ceremony. How long? I don't know how long back when it's been constituted, but it's part of certain congregation. Again, I explain, it's not the minagim of, it's a custom for all, everyone. 
And it's not halacha. Halacha, it's definitely not halacha. It's part of the uh, ceremony of the bar mitzvah ceremony that a person had to read after. There's no obligation uh, from the Torah. There's no halacha. Gam lo lealacha. It's a custom. That that's come by Yadut Ashkenaz, Yadut Teman, and Yadut Iraq and Morocco. That's those, those four that follow it. Most of the others not following it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You follow, Anthony? Uh, okay, thanks yeah. very much. Pleasure, pleasure. Well, yes, my, pleasure. Just one yeah. thing there of interest. When, when I had my bar mitzvah a good few years ago, in our community, there was a big Jewish community. So we had to share the bar mitzvahs for a number of years. So... For me, for me, for example, I did the Haftarah, but my partner did the, did the Maftir. And it went on for a number of years like that. You had one did the Maftir, one did the Haftarah. Uh, okay. I haven't seen it lately. It, uh, it doesn't seem to happen, but uh, it did happen in those days. I tell you, I, I tell you, why is it? Because you obviously have a big number of congregation. I don't know which should you would long, but it was yeah. a lot of people. And not yeah. to cause, not to cause mahloket, because Hazal say kasha mahloket li Israel. Mahloket is the worst thing for the Jewish people. If you want to yeah. understand what is mahloket, mahloket is a faribol. Pashut faribol. Yeah. So mm. instead of causing faribol, what did they say? They say you rather Mr. X will do one and Mr. B will do. It. Mm. One. I think they just but, couldn't have fit the bar mitzvahs in. There were so many just, people. Yes, but just remember. One year, that, but it's not okay. a halacha that you have to do. Ah. It's a custom. Yeah. So to, to just to avoid faribol, <laughs> that's how they do it. Yeah. It happens sometimes. Now, but you can ask a different question. Aval en ma'arvim simcha besimcha. Because Hazal tell us that you cannot mix one simha and another simha. I'm just making yeah. a, a, you know, I'm just asking and, and, and you know, but pil uh, pul. So, but this is not simha be simha. This is not to cause faribol, because you still you, as yourself, you read let's say the mafti, and your partner, whoever was your partner, read the after. You understand what I'm saying? So both yeah. of you both part of the ceremony of your bar mitzvah. You understand what I'm saying? You both yeah. share it, but there's no mahloket. And that's the yeah. most important. But you ha must remember, the, me, me have, doing the haftarah means that I never read from the Torah. He did. No. So I've never read from the Torah. So how did I have a bar mitzvah without reading from the Torah? OK, there is no problem. There is no problem that you don't read from the Torah. Why? Because you on that Shabbos, you didn't read. But the other Shabbos that you gone up, did you get the, 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 the Aliyah on Monday, on Thursday? For yeah, sure. uh, not, uh, not in those days, but uh, to actually read from the, the, the portion of the Mafti, let's say, I've never done that. Okay, but there is no you. You don't have an uh, obligation. You have to know the tropes. And if you don't know the tropes, so what they do today? Today there is a Baal Kore. What is a Baal Kore? They call it Baal Kore. A person that read all the parsha. Why? Because Lehatchila Minadin, a person that call him up to the Torah, he should read the portion that he have to read. That's mean a Kohen have to read a portion of the Kohen with the tropes, but not every Kohen, not every Levi, not every Israel. Israelite can read the portion that they call him. So what did they say? Not to embarrass people, not to cause variable, because some people say, no, I can read, but I'm Yanko Conry. So what, we're gonna start having here a havoc? What did they decide to do? They're gonna call a person that called Baal Kore. What does it mean a Baal Kore? A person that he gonna read all the Pasha, and with that, there is no more any argument, there's no more faribol, there's no more embarrassment for no one. You follow? Yep. Thank okay. you, Rob. Pleasure. Yes. Uh, uh, Stephen. Stephen. 
Sima Kevetz. Baruch Hashem yourself. Baruch Hashem. We understand why there was the why they institute the Torah, the have Torah during the Greeks. But why were, but once that decree had ended, why did they continue hearing the have Torah? There was, there was not, there's actually really no need to, to continue the have Torah after that. Why not? Because the Haftarah, it's a very good question. You're asking a very valid question, but why not? I'll answer you, but why not? Yes. What, is, what did we explain at the beginning of the... The idea of, the idea of, of reading the Haftarah is what the Prophet tell us regarding that... Oh, the week. Okay. okay. Yeah. That means that the event that happened that we're reading on a week, for example, that we read Parashat, but <clears throat> sorry, when we read Parashat by Hanan, yes, what what is it speaking about? Nahamu nahamu ami, nahon the haftar. Yeah. What dafka nahamu nahamu ami? And by the way, by the way, uh, I don't know if you take notice, if all of you take notice, that from Parashat nahamu, from the haftar of nahamu, we have sheva. Sheva, that means seven haftarot shel nechama. Nechon? Shel nechama. Nechama is a comfort. That means it's come to tell us, the prophet come to tell us something very important. I know that things going to be difficult. And we saw it because HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us the prophecy, the prophet say, I'm telling you, the prophet say, that you have to comfort. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised you that he will redeem you. And he will comfort you for all of those difficulty. So what is the connection? The idea is that the, the Haftara come to teach us that the, 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 what do you call it? The prophet, the kings, whatever they say, it's come to, get, to build and to implant on us the belief that everything that happened HaKadosh Baruch Hu obviously saw that going to be, for example, for those seven weeks, <laughs> A bit difficult, he's gonna comfort us. So it's come to implant on us the belief and to explain to us to every event that happened to the Jewish people, if it's good or if it's bad, there is a comfort. And where does it come from? And why is it why is it come? That means, for example, if we read about Purim, the story of Purim, the miracle. It's come to tell us that Akadosh Baruch Hu already told the prophet, listen, there will be in a, such a way that I need to send such a wicked person like Haman Rasha, that he's going to be in control only for 70 days. But on those 70 days, he put such a decree on the Jewish people that they will do tshuva, that I'll, 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 I will redeem them. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the prophecy the word of the prophecy is come to implant on us that whatever event that happened to us, it's because the Torah is telling us. And to understand that the event of the Torah that we're reading, it is a life. You understand what I'm saying? I hear you. Mm-hmm. Any other question, Rabotai? So it's actually not that? to do the actual, so sorry, it's not to do with the actual, the fact that, 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 uh, so with today, it's not it's because, as you're saying because of the uh, it relates to the events of the day. It's not actually to do with the um, <clears throat> with the actual not, uh, abandonment or that, that the Torah can came back again, and therefore we we, we have to uh, we abandon the Torah. That, that's a, that's no, a no. different reason. No, Stephen, you're right. It's number mm-hmm. one. You can't cancel Sunday that the reading because they already become as an event. It's become a Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the idea of it, the idea of it that they kept it mm. to show the Jewish people mm. that we will understand and we'll see in our eyes that whatever the prophets say or whatever the prophecy was, whatever the prophets, yes. the prophet told us going to happen, it's a lie. Mm. So every partial that we read, if we look at the prophecy, it's something amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have, Sheva. Parshiot, seven parshot of Haftara Shel Nahama. Akadosh Baruch Hu promised our fathers, and the Rambam said, Ad Mishloshes Ra'ikarim, to believe that the Mashiach come. 
you know, you all understand and you all can feel those three weeks that we start from the three weeks, everything feel, yeah. I don't know how to explain to you, like for Drus, everything is for yeah. Drus, the headache, yeah. everything going heavy, nothing going smooth, whatever you touch. After the, after Tisha B'Av, look how the weather become much nicer. <laughs> look how things start to flow. <laughs> everything, yeah. everything's to fit. Parashat Vayit Hanan, you say, Nahamu, Nahamu Ami, you know? Yeah. From that, you feel already like a different person. For sure. You feel, ah, ah, the Neshama getting an extra boost. And that's Sheva Parashot Shel Nehama. That's the beauty about it. And you can feel it. And Hazal constitute that for us to understand that. Why to understand that? That we believe and that's the secret that if you look at every end of my show, I always say that we should merit to see the coming of our Mashiach in our days, that we'll merit to see him, and the building of the third Bet HaMikdash. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we've done a show about it. By that, that you're saying it, you're actually speeding, you're speeding the coming of the Mashiach, building of the third Bet HaMikdash, the third Bet HaMikdash. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any other Can question? Can I ask? Yes, sure. Rabbi, please. Um, why don't we ever go through the, we always go through the parasha, but we never ever go through the haftarot. You go to shul, everybody speaks about, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's the Torah and I understand it, but we never delve in. We never go in depth into okay. the actual Haftarah. Very good question. I and do, I but, uh, uh, but mostly, you know, nobody speaks about it. Nahon, nahon. The, the, the Shulchan Aruch write like this. <laughs> Shulchan Aruch write that on Shabbat, on Shabbat, we read the Torah. And uh, before Minha, before Minha, the rabbi should sit and speak about the Haftarah. That means take the book of the prophecy, a book, one of the book of the prophet, or one of the book of the king, the Nach, what we call it, Nevi'im Ktuvim, and start to explain what's happening. But we have to understand that today there's no time. I wish that I have time, you know, to sit and to write. Maybe I should do every week. Maybe I'll try it from this coming week, Be'ezrat Hashem to add up in the end of the show, just to take one, even one or two verses from the, 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 the Haftarah and to try to explain. Blin Eder, it's a good idea. Lama, Blin Eder, I will appreciate Eder, it. I try to do the Parsha like I do. Look, as is, the Parsha take us close to an hour and 15 yeah. minutes. You know what I'm saying? So maybe yeah. instead of for an hour and 15 minutes, maybe I'll give 10 or 15 minutes for the Haftarah, so people will know what are we talking in Haftarah? No, it's a good idea. Why not? Why not? We're saying, now, we're saying now, we saying now it's Sheva Shabbatot of Nechama, but we're not hearing the beautiful words of Yeshayahu of what he's saying. <laughs> no, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no. So can... Aval, okay. when you read it, when you read the, the prophecy on those seven days, you see, you see, Yeshaya wrote Nahamu Nahamu Ami. What does it mean, Nahamu Ami? Why Dafka twice Nahamu? First of all, comfort, the number one for the pain that you have with the Babylonian. The second one is what happened, we know that they destroyed the, 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 the what do you call it? That they destroyed the um, the temple. Bet Hamikdash. Bet Hamikdash. Did you? Shne Bet Hamikdash. That means to tell us. Yeah. Nahon that will be, but I will comfort you. I will comfort you for both of them. Third Bet Hamikdash, as I'll explain, and I've done a show about it. I don't know if you join. The third Bet Hamikdash actually gonna come ready, ready from heaven. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what the secret about it? 
Orna, that every shul that exists going to be part of that Beit HaMikdash. Amen. Do you understand that? That every yeah. shul that there is in the world going to be part of it. That's mean going to be certain section to remind us. Amen. And speedily in our days. Amen. Can you hear on? So thank you, Rabbi. Good night. Yes, Who speaking? Rabbi Shmuli. Yes, Shmuli. No, no, so this shab is coming. Which part should we read? We read Macha or because last last Shabbos, I mean yesterday we read Parashat Aikiv. Aikiv, Aikiv, Aikiv. This this coming Shabbos you're talking? Parashat Re. Yeah, Parashat Re. Yeah, but that's even talking about the after all. After all, the Sunday is uh, Rosh Chodesh. Rosh uh Chodesh. -huh. I'm, I'm not with you. you you're talking about what the past. But it's Shabbat Mavarchim, so it's got nothing to do with the uh, with the parasha. But, what, what is the question? I don't understand. Rosh Chodesh, Chodesh is next Sunday. Yes, but it's only on the uh -huh. Shabbat. Rega, 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 rega. You read when? When do you read? Yeah, Shmuli? 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 Yes? What do you read on Shabbos? Parashat Re'e. Ra. But uh, oh, Haftorah. Won't the Haftorah be? Yeah, that's the parsha. When is, when is Rosh Chodesh? Sunday, Sunday, Monday. Nahon, Sunday, Monday. That means that on Shabbat you don't read, on Shabbat you don't read the after of Parashat Chodesh. You can't. No, 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 read Maha Chodesh. Maha Chodesh, yeah, but that's not Parashat Chodesh. There's a different. Parashat Chodesh is only if on Shabbat it happened to fall Rosh Chodesh. You follow? Yes. Yeah, so what's the question? No, because no, if, if Rosh Chodesh is on a Sunday, then you want to read Yom Elo Yonatan Macha Chodesh. Nachon, no. So what's the question? The next Shabbos. It's the next Shabbos day, day really. It's a, mm -hmm. Next day. It's not, it's not on Shabbos. No, so you read Macha Chodesh. What's Shabbos, Shabbos becomes... Uh, Macha uh, Chodesh. But you read Macha Chodesh. Macha Chodesh is not Parashat Chodesh. You follow. No, no, I said, no, I said so which which chapter do you read for next on, on Shabbos? Do you read Macha Chodesh or do you read for the A? I think that you read Macha Chodesh. You read. No, but for A is this Shabbos. No, but I think it's Macha yeah. Chodesh. According to this, yeah. you read on Yasara. Sorry, sorry, Norman, tell us. According to the Luach, it's a Erev Rosh Chodesh, Ra'a. The Haftorah is Aniyasara. Aniyasara. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. the Mahara Hodesh. And, and now it makes sense. Why? Because it's part of the, of the seven. seven. Uh, seven we, okay, seven, I understand. Seven. Uh, the seven. Uh, the Sheva Shabbat Shel Nehama. That means the seven uh, Sabbaths of Nehama, of yeah. comfort. Follow. Okay. Uh, sorry, so what would have been Machar Chodesh? If it wasn't during the seven weeks, it would have been Machar Chodesh. Bid you exactly, exactly, Norman, exactly, Shakua. If it wasn't for sorry, seven Shavuot and Nehama, it would be complicated. So the, the seven, sh the seven sh um, Haftoras that are following are just following the normal uh, Parshiot. Yes, that's correct. Nahon, 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 
לאייז דיס וויק, הם שופטים אז נקסט וויק. נכון. זה נורמלי, אפטר שופטים, זה שולט בין מחר החודש. נכון. אבל עכשיו אנחנו רק נראה את ההפטר של שופטים. Is that what you're saying, Ralph? Yes, well, uh, that's, if, that's, if that's going there, I don't, I don't have the Luach in the front of me, but I think that you're right. I think okay. that you're right. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah. Much obliged. Any other love to see you. Okay. <laughs> good, good. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, we should all gonna meet. Be'ezrat Hashem, I see here there's any messages. Let me just look. Yes, there's here two messages, I see. Someone send me messages. I just want to read them. Let me see someone. He was a minhag of your side to read the Aftara. That was Hilton Kaplan. Okay. So why is the, the person that have a your side is to read the Aftara? First of all, as you say, it's a minhag, Hilton. But the idea behind it, because when a person have a Aftara, Usually you give him the mashlim, what it's called mashlim, it's the maftir, and he read it. Why does he have to read it? By that, that he read it, and he say the brachot, he's, he's, that will help to uplift the neshama. So that's mean when you saying all of those, because you say more brachot, number one, you say the birkot Torah, then you say, <clears throat> then you say the brachot of the aftara, number two, And then you do the mitzvah of reading the Aftara, and then the brachot in the end of the Aftara, all of that to uplift to what? The neshama, that there is a yod side on that week. Not only if you have on a Shabbos, all of that, if it's fell on any days of the week, let's say that it fell on a Thursday, and on Shabbat they give you new Aftara you read, to uplift the neshama with the brachot, number one, And reading. That's the main idea. You follow, Hilton. I hope that I explained that. Let me see if there is any more question. One second, Rabota, before we finish. No, there's no more question. Hello, can I tell me it's Anthony quickly? Sure, Anthony. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Bechavod. Bechavod, Bechavod, Anthony. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Bechavod, Bechavod. Anthony, ask a question already. Anthony, can you hear me? We're waiting for your question. No. Hello? No, Anthony, lost can you hear me? I think that we lost connection, Anthony. Yeah, connection's gone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Rabotai, I would like hey, to... Me. Show... Hello? Anthony? I can't hear you. Anthony, you can, yeah. you can ask me, send me a message. I would like to wish all of you a good night. I hope that you enjoy the show. When you read after, yeah. it will give a different Quran. meaning. Them to wish you all a great night. And please, God, we'll meet on this coming Thursday for the Parsha. And I tried to do also this Um, the week to try to bring something from the Aftara, Bli Neder Be'ezrat Hashem. Wish all of you good Rob, night. Thank you. The best. Good night. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rob. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Awesome.